In the 19th century, 2,000 miles south of Cahokia, a group of European explorers carved their way into the jungles of southern Mexico. There, buried for centuries and surrounded by massive pyramids, they came upon a royal palace, resplendent with grand rooms, courts, and a tower. The Europeans recognized that by their own standards, the site was a legacy of greatness. Standing in the middle of the largest Indian nation in North America, the Maya, descendants of the pyramid builders, the explorers could not imagine that the towering architecture was the work of Indian people. Instead, they speculated wildly about the lost civilization that could have built so grand an existence. Refugees from the sunken continent of Atlantis, a lost tribe of Israel, seafarers from the Orient, even beings from another planet. They considered everything but the obvious. In 1949, a Mexican archaeologist came to the same magnificent ruins, now known as Palenque. He climbed the steps to the top of the largest pyramid, the Temple of the Inscription. There he noticed holes in the floor below the capstones. He removed the slabs and discovered a rubble-filled passageway descending deep into the pyramid's heart. After three years of excavation, the passage was cleared. At the bottom, was a tomb that had been buried for over 1,200 years. It would unlock the history of Palenque and help to reveal the past of the Mayan people, a past they left for the future to read. For centuries, Mayan glyphs were considered complex picture stories like Egyptian hieroglyphics. Only in the 1980s did archaeologists finally recognize that it was true writing. They were not looking at pictures to be interpreted, but symbols for sounds to be read. It was the Maya language. Instantly, a door was opened on the past. Beneath the five-ton sarcophagus cover at Palenque lay Pakal, shield in the Maya language. He was born in 603 AD. His head was bound at birth to enlarge his forehead, a fashion that marked him as a member of the royal elite. He wore a cosmetic bridge on his nose and decorated his hair with water lilies. Pakal rose to power at the age of 12. He would build a holy city and rule for nearly 70 years, leading Palenque during a time of greatness and growth in the Mayan world. As the Maya expanded, over 60 capital cities emerged, their growth fueled by a successful agricultural society. of Mayan agriculture reached back thousands of years and stretched across Mexico and into Central America. Now, friends and brothers, listen to these words of dreaming. Spring rains give us life and bring forth the golden corn silk. By the time of Christ, there were millions of people in the region with agriculture allowing populations to settle and expand.
art, mathematics, astronomy, architecture, priesthoods, and royalty all flourished. By the mid-700s, at Palenque alone, the sons of Pakal ruled over 200,000 Maya living in regional communities of farmers, weavers, stonemasons, and feather workers. But the golden age of building and growth would be transformed by a new era of war and destruction. For reasons still locked in the past, the Mayan world turned against itself. Farmers became soldiers. By 800 AD, an era had ended. Most of the capitals that had been among the living wonders of human creativity including Palenque, were deserted and reclaimed by the jungle. 